speed car racing is one of the truly national categories in Australian Speedway, with origins tracing back to the early 1920s. The days of open cockpit speed car racing were extremely popular, with massive crowds flocking to stadiums across the country to see these mighty cars and their incredibly brave and talented drivers. The decade of the 1960s is recognised by historians as the golden era of the sport in this country. It was not unusual to see around 30,000 people cramming into venues like the Sydney Showground to watch what became dramatic sporting theatre on a weekly basis. The popularity of this class was the catalyst for a dedicated national championship trail that was inaugurated in 1964 known as the WD and HO Wills National Speed Car Drivers Championship. The Speedway Australia sanctioned Speed Car Pro Series has been created to take this form of racing back to the future. The tournament comprises seven rounds across Australia and it all begins at the Perth Motorplex tonight. The event doubling as the annual Magic Man 34 named in honour of the late great Michael Figliamini. Welcome to the all new Speed Car Pro Series, exclusive to Check and Flag. Presented by Speedway Australia in conjunction with Valvoline Sinpower, providing the ultimate motor oil protection and performance. Yes, great to have your company. Magnificent weather conditions prevailing at the Perth Motorplex here at Quinana Beach, albeit a little blustery for the first ever round of the Speed Car Pro Series, of course, incorporating the Magic Man 34. What an event coming your way on Checkered Flag over the next hour. A dose of history tonight at the Motorplex. Joining me is the defending Magic Man 34 champion, and in fact, the man that's won the last four, an absolute mortgage on the race. Davey Ray, you've flown in from Indianapolis. You obviously enjoy this one. Yeah, we certainly do. Uh, you know, we, we wouldn't be here without the Figlamini family and in memory of Michael. So uh, that's why we're here. And I got to thank uh, Mark DeRosa and the entire uh, family and my team here behind me uh, for bringing us all here. The reality is uh, this race has a global reputation and it's something fairly special because of what it means. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, you know, Michael has fame in his own. So he's a very accomplished midget uh, speed car driver. And uh, we're here to celebrate uh, his life and his legacy that he's left behind and there's quite a few great competitors here today so it's going to be a tough race. There's a lot happening in world speed car racing not least of which is the inauguration of a, of a world championship and of course uh, here in Australia the speed car pro series it all gets underway here tonight so uh, no shortage of things to look forward to for you guys. Yeah that's absolutely true um, we've heard a lot of good things about the pro series coming up here so we're happy that we're here at the very first event and uh, we look forward to continuing a few more at least throughout the season. Biggest danger tonight, who's your biggest threat? Oh, you know, there's a few here and there. Uh, obviously, I think top of the list there would be Adam Clark, so we need to uh, keep him harnessed or at least uh, in our sights. Good luck tonight, mate. Thanks a lot. There is Davey Ray, defending Magic Man 34 champion and certainly one of the men to beat in tonight's opening round of the Speed Car Pro Series. Here's a little more on how the Speed Car Pro Series came to be. The inaugural Speed Car Pro Series is Australian Speedway's newest tournament. Sanctioned by Speedway Australia in conjunction with Speed Cars Australia, the Pro Series follows a similar racing format to World Series Sprint Cars and the National Super Sedan Series. For Season 1, the Pro Series will be contested over seven rounds across four states, and tonight's opening round also incorporates the Magic Man 34 at the Perth Motorplex. Round two is slated for Quit Collie Speedway and the following round is at Quit Bunbury Speedway. The circus then travels to South Australia for rounds four and five at Speedway City and Murray Bridge Speedway respectively. Nowra Speedway hosts the only New South Wales round prior to the tournament culminating at Premier Speedway in Warrnambool, Victoria. Twelve drivers have been contracted to contest all rounds of the Pro Series led by reigning Australian champion Neville Lance. 
He represents one of six drivers from Western Australia who will make up half the contracted lineup of drivers. South Australia has three drivers represented, while New South Wales has two. Andy Pearce is the sole Victorian driver. The race format for each round commences with the Revolution Race Ski Quick Time, where all drivers run two laps against the clock. Two rounds of heat racing then follows, with points accumulated from qualifying in the heats, deciding the field for the A-Main. The top seven in the points advance to the Super 7's pole shootout to decide the A-Main top seven starting positions. The event concludes with the running of the A-Main that decides the overall round winner. Yes, that's the format pertinent to the inaugural Speed Car Pro Series. Good to have you with us on the Speed Channel history tonight at the Perth Motorplex. The mighty midgets in action. Beside me, Sammy Walsh. Good to see you. Thanks, David. It's, a, it's always a great opportunity to be here and, uh, and see the, the Figma Mini race once again. There's the social media contact points for the all-new Speed Car Pro Series. And uh, Warren Ferguson, uh, you've peddled a few midgets around in your career. It's an exciting night tonight. It certainly is, and I'm very, very happy to be here celebrating the Pro Series and the Magic Man 34. Talking of the Magic Man 34, it was inaugurated in the 2007-2008 season, won by Mark Brown from Sydney, and then Dean McCallan following up. Prior to Davey Ray blasting the next four years with his name on the top of the Magic Man 34 trophy. It is a special race, and well done to Speedway Australia for jumping on the back of it and combining the opening round of the Speed Car Pro Series tonight. Adam Clark, a little earlier, was the quick man, 16.308 seconds. In advance of America's Casey Schumann, Brad Steele working with us tonight. He caught up with Adam. Thanks, Dave. Well, with me is quick time tonight for Revolution Race Gear. Adam Clark, a great start to the night. Yeah, it's a good start tonight. the night. Um, I mean, uh, car's good. Brand new car we've got here tonight. Uh, you know, our Mac Chazzy built by Keith, the car owner, and uh, just got to give him a lot of credit. He's put a lot of time and effort in build this new car, and uh, we've got our new Scott English motor um, uh, race engine, and, um, you know, I mean, things are going well. So we'll keep on top of it and see how the night progresses. So since last season, since you joined up with Mac, it's been a great st great uh, combination. Yeah, I mean, we've got a good good crew. Um, you know, we've got good uh, good sponsors, and I'd just like to thank all, all Keith and Peter's sponsors for uh, supporting us again this year. And, um, yeah, mate, we just uh, have fun and enjoy our racing. All the best for the rest of the night. Thank you. The Speed Car Pro Series is the most anticipated national speedway tournament in recent years. Competitor interest has been outstanding for this new series, which is modelled along the same lines as the WD and HO Wills National Speed Car Drivers Championship of the 1960s. The series has been two years in the making, following Speed Cars Australia's decision back in 2011 to race under the jurisdiction of the sports governing body, Speedway Australia. Following the success of World Series Sprint Cars and the National Super Sedan Series, it was only a matter of time before Speedway Australia created a similar event for the sport's oldest form of car racing. Series director Shane Collins is justifiably proud the series has finally come to fruition. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, luckily we've got the resources to be able to do it now. Um, certainly as a, as a company, as Speedway Australia, you know, we spent a lot of time and effort into it. But, you know, our resources that we've got in World Series Sprint Cars, we've basically just moved them across um, to, to bring into this series. So it hasn't been too bad. Just the organisation, doing contracts, talking to teams, tracks and all that. That's where a lot of the work is done. But, uh, you know, once we put it all together, it sort of goes together pretty easily. So uh, just a lot of time, which, you know, we're very lucky to be able to do that because we've seen you know, a full-time staff, obviously. Since the tournament was announced back in June this year, interest in the championship has continued to increase. Yeah, and that's been great. That, that was an important thing for us, is we've got to sell it in the right light. We've got to be able to market this division um, to new people, and we feel like we're doing that already. Um, so, you know, we think it's really positive. The drivers have been great. We're getting a lot of positive feedback. Um, I know in the eastern states, they can't wait for us to get over there. Um, South Australia, you know, a little town, you know, a little club, if you like, that only have sort of, you know, in the teens with numbers. But, um, you know, they're already getting growth because of this. So, you know, so it's really good. We're looking forward to getting, uh, getting into it. Speedway Australia has ensured that the traditional speed car events such as the Magic Man 34 maintain their status in the sport, whilst also becoming a round of this new tournament. It's something that Speedway Australia has paid careful attention to. Well, that was the big thing for us, Brad, and I'm sure as you know, like speed cars are just an amazing event. You know, they're great to watch, and 
um, but they're really well known internally um, and we need to sell these bigger events to the wider community and uh, that was a big thing as part of this series was we wanted to grab some of the events around the country I mean this one's obviously quite big already um, but the prestige about the Crouch Memorial and what that's got in the in the um, you know demographics of Australian Speedway is big and we've got to sell that Victorian titles the longest serving speed car race in the country you know um, for us now to be able to put that on television you know bring more competitors and give it a lot more profile we're really excited about that so um, that was part of putting this deal together was trying to grab some big speed car events and get, help them grow as well in season one Speedway Australia's objective is to establish the Speed Car Pro Series as a significant national tournament that competitors will aspire to compete in. With the first three rounds being held in Western Australia, the teams and drivers have already thrown their support behind the new concept. And for Collins, the only direction the series can go in is up. Well, we couldn't thank WA enough for their support. To be perfectly honest with you, mate, we could have been here for a month. I mean, I had eight tracks that wanted rounds. Um, it was really sad that we had to turn some down, but we really made a conscious effort to try and make the series um, sort of not too large first up. Um, we couldn't expect these guys to go and travel for three months and, you know, 15 rounds and things like that. So um, the support over here has been amazing and, and the drivers, the tracks, it's been excellent. So we're excited to be in WA. It's great. The, the cars look amazing. The, the level's gone through the roof in presentation. Um, we just hope we can add to it. And we really feel like, you know, speed car racing in the next three years, let's hold on and go for the ride. It'll be exciting. An impressive field of 28 cars entered the annual Magic Man 34 race. In addition to the 12 contracted drivers, a further 16 drivers from Australia, New Zealand and the United States entered the opening round. Having scored the Revolution Race Gear quick time, Adam Clark would start at the rear in Heat 1, but was unable to work his way up to the front. Daryl Clayton and Mark Brown were battling early for the lead, however they weren't prepared for the Davy Ray onslaught. Taking just three laps to work his way from ninth to first, he easily took the win from Brown and Alfie Guadagnino. Clark eventually finished fourth. Yeah, thanks a lot there. That, uh, that was a good race. You know, we just had to be smart in that one there. The track was just a little bit slippery. I could tell they put a little water down and, you know, we got a really good car here with this King Chassis Synergy engine, uh, but we probably could have won that one with a Edmunds VW. Heat 2 saw a fascinating battle between New South Welshman Matt Smith and Arizona's Casey Schumann. Smith took the early lead on lap 1 before Schumann quickly reeled him in with a great run out of turn 2 on lap 2. Schumann was set for victory but made an error when he understeered into turn 1, allowing Smith to retake the lead and claim the win from Scott Glazebrook. Schumann eventually recovered to finish third. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, that was sort of our last chance coming into one two there. Someone kept hitting the bottom and splashing the water up. So um, yeah, it made it a bit hard to try and pass. I mean, probably should have dried up around the top, but um, yeah, so it's in behind him there and give it one last shot, shot there on that last lap. And um, yeah, it ended up working. I don't know what happened to him, but yeah, he just stuffed up somehow. <laughs> Having started from position eight in heat three, former solo rider Lee Redmond drove like a man possessed from the get go. It only took Redmond four laps to reel in early leader Todd Bennett before clearing out to take a commanding win from Paul Robinson, followed by Bennett. Pennsylvania's Alex Bright finished fifth. Yeah, thanks mate. Yeah, the car's going really, really well. Um, pretty fast. Uh, we've got a good bit of a luck in the, the first corner there. A couple of guys sort of opened, opened a bit of a gap and I seemed to get through there and I got past the other two guys pretty quickly. So once we were sort of in front, it was, it was good. You could just drive a smooth line and and sort of, uh, yeah, got, got a good feel for the car as well. Still to come on Checkered Flag, we pick up racing action with a second round of heats. Plus, we sit down with Australian speed car champion Neville Lance. I must love the sport, you know, my speed cars, otherwise they stay around for 30 odd years. I mean, that's a statement in itself, you know. I, I just love the speed cars and um, I still love them now and obviously I, I don't really want to give up, but I mean, maybe I'll have to think about it in the future. We'll just see how this season runs out. I'm Keisha and you're watching the Speed Car Pro Series on Speed. Thanks for joining us on Check and Flag tonight. Our program brought to you by Valvoline Sinpower. And back here at the Perth Motorplex, a massive crowd in attendance. Well, Michael Pickens, one of the world's great speed car drivers, has had major problems. Here he is. Well, a young man that came here to invade this weekend. Unfortunately, it looks like it might be an early night for you, Michael. Yeah, we've got um, 
terminal engine trouble here, so um, maybe we can find a spare car and, and get back out there. It's, uh, it's a shame to come all this way and it's something so simple by the sounds of it has gone wrong with the motor and I'm not having the spare parts to do anything with it. Yeah, yeah I, um, I seem to have a bit of bad luck every time I come here but um, yeah, it's a neat track and um, the figure many uh, families, um, it's really neat what they've done with putting this event on and um, yes, it's a shame we can't uh, finish it off in the car we started. Yeah, Michael Pickens, uh, well a very big loss in terms of his participation here tonight. I did describe him as one of the world's great speed car drivers. Sammy, that is certainly no exaggeration. What a talent. Definitely a worldwide talent. You know, he's, he's been extremely successful in Australia, uh, New Zealand, and also the States. Here's the grid in heat race number four. We pick up our coverage from Clayton Brown, Mill Smith, Wad Agnino, King Shot, Buck Walter, the American, and Adam Clark. So you saw the race recap of what transpired in the opening three heats, the first round in our first segment on today's program. So here's history at the Perth Motorplex, the Speed Car Pro Series for 2013-14. Here's Go and Clayton, early race leader, heads onto the back straight. He's under siege already. Sydney's Mark Brown is on the fly and Brown in the showpiece signs entry moves up on the inside to take the lead then he runs wide and that enables Clayton to surge back on the inside. Good racing here from the get-go. Driver's able to use a lot of the racetrack from this early in the race or this early in the night a couple of cars touching back there lucky to keep going but uh, yeah it looks like a great racetrack tonight yeah right. Buckwater he's forcing his way through the track there he's just bumping the guys out of the way he's already found himself in third from the rear of the field yeah the American Steve Buckwater what a drive by him in that speed car powered by a Toyota Clayton doesn't he know he's in a race he's got Buckwater now on the inside and Brown is up high on the track well, this really typifies what speed car racing is all about. Three wide, wheel to wheel stuff. And we now also see coming into contention Dane Kingshot, who moves up on the inside of Mark Brown. So Brown's gone from first to fourth. It just typifies speed car racing so much. You know, guys are uh, racing really close together, hard to get a break on each other. You know, they're all in a, in a very close group. And yeah, as I say, it's uh, just typical of speed car racing, extremely close quarter racing. Yeah, Sammy, you see Clarky there just dive bombing to turn one. He's put himself into third, challenging for second, and King shots up the inside there again. The Hunter Valley Hurricane Adam Clark, regarded by many as the most talented speedway driver in Australia, irrespective of category. That's him right hand side of screen. He started last on the grid and he's up running top four. We now go on board with Mark Brown. No shortage of action around the place. Is there King Shot? We saw him. Juan Agnino. There's the update. Clayton Buckwalter. In fact, Buckwalter has now been passed by Clark Brown and King Shot, the top five. What a race here in the Speed Car Pro Series. The cars are using the whole racetrack, Sammy. I mean, there's nobody able to get enough momentum to really break out. And Clayton's just holding his line. Clayton's doing a great job working to the the lower to the mid section of the racetrack. Clark's working the top and he just worked that to his advantage. If anybody does look a little bit probably faster than, than most, it is Clark. He's, he's really got the car cranking around the top. Clark has gone to the front. I'll ask you guys, you've both ran speed cars and obviously sprint cars. We watched how Adam Clark did it on the replay. Is he the most talented speedway driver in Australia? Look, I've done a lot of racing with Adam in the speed car days and he's a bit of a comeback king right at the moment. And uh, he was fast from the get-go. I, I think he's uh, an extraordinary talent that uh, deserves to be in this field. I, I think uh, he's definitely one of the most talented racers in, in the country, whether it be in a, in a midget or a speed car or a sprint car or whatever class he drives. And even probably back to his earlier days in karting and all that sort of thing, he was always known as a, an excellent driver. Clark across the line. What a performance from the back of the field. He has come through and blown them away in heat race number four of... This is the first round of the Speed Car Pro Series. Clayton, King Shot, Guad Agnino officially placed fourth there. There is your race winner. Adam Clark came back to the sport last year and won just about everything he entered. Here he is. Adam, that certainly looked like a very exciting heat. Yeah, it was good fun, mate. Uh, crew's done an awesome job. Car's good. Motor's good. So, uh, yeah, just got to thank Keith and Peter McCallum giving me the opportunity to drive the car. Scott English race engines in, uh, mate. That was fun. So uh, looking forward to the feature. Yeah, winners are grinners. Adam Clark, winner of heat race number four. You think back to the interview I did with uh, Davey Ray at the start of the program today. I asked him, who's your biggest danger today? He didn't hesitate in nominating that man, Adam Clark. And that was prior to Michael Pickens having his engine issues too. So that is a fair wrap 
for the Novocastrian and his ability. Heat race number five of the Speed Car Pro Series presented by Speedway Australia. And a big thanks to Valvoline Sinpower, principal sponsor of Checkered Flag, week in, week out. It's Pierce, Prowl, Ray, Golding, Jordan, Manders, Redmond and Goddard. Now the eight drivers here engaged in heat race number five. Andy Pierce on pole position here. He's the president of Speed Cars Australia, the sports governing body, the Victorian, the reigning Avalon track champion. And he gets a great start here in heat number five. They go down the back straight and Andy Pierce on screen doing it comfortably. The challenges will undoubtedly emerge. Yeah, he got a hell of a job there, David. I'm surprised he got away with that one. I think he's uh, he's, he's could be numbered with someone like uh, like Davy Rain behind. I'd say, be, yeah. What after watching that previous heat, he'd be uh, pretty pretty happy to get to the front without all the challenges that uh, there were in the last one. Here's Davy Ray in the black car, number 71, up into second and looking fairly lethal out there. It's got to be said. This is the man that has won the last four Magic Man 34 tribute races. Huge crowd in tonight at the Perth Motorplex. And it looks like Lee Redmond back there in third. He, he had a good run in the first round of heats and coming out of the solo class, he's showing his no slouch in these speed cars. Yeah, former West Australian Speedway motorcycle champion Lee Redmond making the transition to four wheels. As we watch Ray here sizing up the early race leader Andy Pierce. Redmond running strongly. But the American, he was given a saloon passage on the inside. Pierce kept it up stairs and Ray good enough to seize the opportunity. Ray's obviously very experienced at this track and you know very experienced in the class overall, but you know you give him some, give him an opportunity like that to, to jump up the inside, he's gonna take it every time. You see Davy there carrying his momentum through the corner. It's terribly tough in a midget to carry your momentum. You don't have a wing to hold you there, you've got to slide it into the corner and somehow keep that car straight and drive it forward. Sammy off here. Oh, oh, we see a problem here. Car has spun on the exit to turn number four as captured by our fence cam. So we go orange caution lights on the speedway. Car will be removed and we'll get racing back underway in just a moment. Troy Jordan in car 53, the cause of the stoppage. You were saying off here during the break that it's a lot harder to gain an advantage in a speed car, such as the parity in the class. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. It's obviously uh, to do with the, the cars, the way they race, and, and just just the momentum you try and build, like Warren was saying, is because the cars haven't got the grip, they stay a lot closer to each other. It's hard to gain an advantage and get away from everybody. That's why you see so much pack racing. Yeah, when compared to sprint cars, is what you're undoubtedly referring to. So we go green once more at the Perth Motorplex with four laps to go, Davey Ray, Lee Redman is in second spot. There's the American professional. Probably competes in 70 or 80 speed car meetings annually. A full-time racing pro, certainly one of the big names in this sport. You'd have to put him up there with the likes of Jerry Coons Jr. as one of the really heavy hitters of the sport. Great shot of him negotiating turns three and four at the motorplex. A change in the order here, Lee Redman is still in second. The former bike star making a really good fist of things in the speed car category. Nice close shot of Redmond down the back straight now. He certainly uh, almost looks like he's level pegging with uh, with Davy at the moment. The top obviously being the, the choice line uh, on the racetrack as we see the uh, the top three guys running up there just, just building the momentum as we we're talking about. And uh, it obviously looks like the fast way around. So not far to go in this one now. Heat race number five. You're watching the inaugural Speed Car Pro Series. Round number one of seven from the Perth Motorplex. And of course, Checkered Flag is the home of the Speed Car Pro Series in 2013-14. We see action from every round right here. And it's great to see more of this fabulous category on national television. Davey Ray, he blows them away, wins comfortably in Heat 5. Redmond was next, then Vaughan Manders, a solid drive. Kral and Troy Jordan recovered from that spin to be awarded fifth place overall. So we'll now head down into the pits where Brad Steele is standing by to catch up with the American pro. He'd be pleased with that. As he climbs out of his car for his second heat win, great way to get the night going, Davey. Two wins tonight. Yeah, really good, really good night here so far. Track's in excellent condition there. So, you know, the, quite opposite from what my first heat was there. We're way up around the top. 
this last one. So, you know, I like it way up there, but we're going to have to keep a chance uh, or remember that there's a chance for that bottom to open back up. Davey Ray, he is going to prove very difficult to beat tonight. If you've just joined our coverage, the New Zealand superstar Michael Pickens losing an engine in qualifying, taking no part in tonight's opening round of the Speed Car Pro Series, and that certainly is a disappointment. He certainly is capable of running with Davey Ray and Adam Clark, to name just a couple. Alpha, Alphavich, Bennett, Glazebrook, Robinson, Golding, Bright, and Casey Schumann. So two Americans starting from the back of the pack in position six and seven, respectively. And that will certainly make this very interesting. So Jack Alphavich on pole, driver of car number 35. Final heat race in tonight's opening round of the Speed Car Pro Series. It's time to go racing. You can see the eight car of Robinson, the blue machine, looking up the inside there. Good battle. Scott Black, uh, Glazebrook goes to the front. And Glazebrook with a new colour scheme this year in 2013-14. Car looking terrific. We now go on board with Alex Bright, one of the two Americans. And that's Schumann behind him in the bright yellow car, his compatriot. Watching the two Americans try and dice their way through the pack and, and uh, utilise the, the racetrack to the best of their ability. Glazebrook done a great job to get to the front and get to the top side as, uh, as we saw fast in the last heat and he's going to uh, do his best to take off from here. Just waiting for the Americans to break the shackles and surge through the traffic. Glazebrook, it'll be hard to run down, has tasted victory at uh, WA State Championship level, one of the better speed car drivers in this neck of the woods, you can see the gap that he has opened up. Casey Schumann is on the fly, the American. There he is, right-hand side of screen. We go back on board with Alex Bright, and the two Americans are having a ding-dong battle out there. Bright and Schumann. That's Bright's on board, and that's Schumann trying to find a way by in the bright yellow car. Yeah, they sure are having a fight. Paul Robinson there is making them work for it as well. If we go on board again, we have a look at how close these guys are running. That's Bright's car, you can see the left rear flopping around there, and that's, I'm pretty sure that's Schumann, look at that. You don't get any closer than that, do you, David? They say rub and race, and that was almost racing. It was a millimetre away from contact. Dick Glazebrook's looking the goods, isn't he? As he heads back onto the main straight, exits turn four. This is the biggest lead we've seen of the night yeah, as they cross the start-finish line again. He's got that car nice and straight, just like Davey Ray showed us in the heat before. Up on the high line, keeping the car smooth, carrying the momentum. He, he's running away with this one at the moment. Nice shot of uh, Paul Robinson in car number eight. It is all Scott Glazebrook, however. Sets it up through turns one and two and onto the back straightaway. Gee, I thought the Americans would be closer. Glazebrook got a great start and was able to get to the front. The two Americans have been caught up in traffic, although they are running top three now, as you can see. Well, top four anyway. There's no stopping Glazebrook. I think they've, uh, they've been caught up in their own battle between themselves. They've sort of stopped going forward. They've got to the point where they've uh, reached the back of, of Robinson and, and Robinson doing a great job to hold on to second place. Um, the, the two Americans are, are having trouble getting any further than that. Last lap now for Scott Glazebrook. His family. Major players in West Australian speed car racing. The pool shop sponsored entry. Exits turn number four. And it is check and flag time in heat number six for Scotty Glazebrook. What about the gap between he and his nearest rival, Paul Robinson? Solid drive. He did a good job, Robinson, to fend off Schumann and Bright, the flying Americans. Alphavich, after starting on pole, was officially placed in fifth position. So that is the end of the heat races tonight. Of course, the big one still to come, the main event, as well as a feature story on Neville Lance. Scott Glazebrook, he's beaming. Let's hear from him. Well, we were guaranteed one thing. This kid would have a smile after that. Good to be on the uh, wind board there, Scotty. Yeah, it was great. The track's awesome. It's really opening up. Uh, come out of, we're supposed to start out of six, so we're pretty happy with that one. So after time trials, you wouldn't have been too excited about it, but uh, it's certainly improving. Yeah, we struggled. We uh, made a few small changes to try and get some more forward drive out of the car, and uh, it seemed to work in that one. We're still a little bit fine tuning because the car's a little bit, a little bit light on the front end, especially mid-turn, so hopefully we can smooth that out and be pretty consistent for the feature. Yeah, well done to Scotty, and uh, we now look forward to the main event with no little expectation. Mark Brown, the Sydney driver, has had a fairly tough night at the office, and there are issues with his car. As you can see, the rear end is out of it. Let's find out more. 
Mark Brown, not an ideal night tonight and putting a rear end in the car at this current stage? Yeah, struggled in time trial. That's hurt us like 19th or something. Ran second in our first team, then fifth in the next one. We got swamped, um, cracked the diff, so just doing a diff change. Hopefully we can get out there for the feature. It's going to be touch and go, but we should make it. So that's our last seat. Exciting from the outside. What was it from the inside the cockpit? Oh, man, they were swamping me. You know, I was doing slide jobs, they were doing slide jobs. It's just, you know, maybe another lap. Might have got a couple back, but it's just the way it goes, man. It's tough racing. It's, it's fast, you know. The Super 7 Pole Shuffle forms an integral part of the all-new Speed Car Pro Series where the top seven qualifiers uh, do battle in an attempt to improve their grid positions. And that, in fact, happened for Alex Bright tonight. He started or qualified, if you like, in position seven, was able to make his way up to second, where he will now start on the grid. Unfortunately, time constraints don't allow us to bring you the action in the Super 7s, but here is Alex Bright with Brad. Thanks very much, Dave. Well, this young American has certainly uh, made people stand up and take notice. Great run on that lucky seven there, Alex. Yeah, we definitely got this uh, uh, Polar Ice number 29 working. Um, didn't start off too good in the heat races, but we got this thing working for that, that uh, what do they call it, pole dash? Pole dash, so uh, I'm, I'm happy we'll be starting on top, or I guess, inside pole or outside pole, depending on what Adam Clark picks. Um, and we're definitely going to be a contender for tonight. After a career that spans 30 years, Neville Lance is still a competitive speed car driver at an age that many would consider retirement. At 58 years of age, the Gooseberry Hill resident has been a fan favourite across a variety of classes, which includes a stint in NASCAR during the mid-1990s. But it has been speed cars that his reputation has been forged. Last season saw Lance achieve a lifelong dream in becoming an Australian speed car champion winning in front of his home crowd at the Perth Motorplex after decades of trying to win the prestigious crown. Despite a long career, Lancel derives a great deal of joy from racing speed cars, and whilst he does confess he never expected his career to last as long as it has, the thought of retirement has crossed his mind. No, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, um, I must love the sport, you know, my speed cars, otherwise they stay around for 30 odd years. I mean. That's a statement in itself, you know. I just love the speed cars and um, I still love them now and obviously I, I don't really want to give up, but I mean, maybe I'll have to think about it in the future. We'll just see how this season runs out. Before entering speed car racing, Lance started his career in off-road vehicles. However, his speedway roots were planted when he went to the Claremont Speedway as a kid. Well, actually, when I was seven years old, I used to go to Speedway with my neighbour and um, I always loved the speed cars and I said to him one day, look, I'm going to race one of those. He goes, oh, look, son, they're too expensive. You can never do that. And I went, oh, never really thought about it. And then the opportunity came up about 1982. And I've been there ever since. But you haven't uh, just started speed cars. You've dabbled in other things, of course. You did try some speed car, sprint car racing, sorry, and also NASCAR. I mean, they were two different forms altogether compared to a midget. Yeah, look, I mean, we had the opportunity to either go sprint car racing or NASCAR. And NASCAR came to Australia and... Back then we thought that would be the way to go, well I think we did about 10 years and of course then Bob Jane closed the, um, the circuit up and we then took all the cars back to the States and, and had a, I think three meetings over there on the west coast and then we, we, we sold the whole outfit over there. Uh, in regards to like, the driving styles, they must be completely different. Yeah look, it, nothing the same at all, I mean I, I thought the NASCAR and the speed car could work hand in hand and um, it didn't really help me at all. I mean. Um, you're jumping from a bitumen car that weighs three and a half thousand pounds to a, to a little car that weighs 900 pounds and there's nothing similar at all. Since beginning his career in 1982, Lance has been fortunate to work with like-minded people in the sport, such as Jeff Murphy. This partnership continues to present day and Lance has great fondness for the Australian Speedway Hall of Fame inductee. Yeah, Jeff's been great to me. I mean, he, I've run his cars my whole career. I mean, I've had some um, drives in some other people's cars, like got different chassis, but I love my Murphy chassis. I mean, just does a wonderful job. He helps out. He, he does all the suspension work. I mean, obviously any damage work, and he supplies the car to me, so I can't complain. It would appear the Lance surname will be around in the sport for years to come. His son Darren has been having a few practice runs in his father's car, and plans are afoot for the second generation driver to go racing next season. Yeah, my son Darren, he's um, been on my back this season to, ha to go to practice and start learning the ropes, so to speak, and um, hopefully um, come next season he'll be up to speed and um, 
hopefully we can get him into the meetings. On speed, you're watching the 19th season of Checkered Flag. Proudly presented by Valvoline Sinpower. Delivering the ultimate motor oil protection and performance. Well, Keisha, how did you and David meet? Uh, actually through Casey Schumann. Um, we had went over to a get-together for a barbecue and that's how I'd met him, just through friends. Was it a love at first sight? Absolutely. <laughs> Who made the first move? Davey did. What did he say? Well, he came up to me and brought me um, a drink and said hi. <laughs> and, and it kind of went on from there. And when was your first date, officially? Um, the first date officially was when we all went out for drinks. It was just a group of people. So um, our official date was about three months after we were talking to by ourselves. So. Where did he take you? Um, we actually went to a local um, place called Cheddar's. And it's all over the United States, but it was the one in Indianapolis that we went to. How long have you been together? Uh, we've been together right about seven months. His worst habit? His worst habit? Uh, probably uh, fidgeting whenever he's trying to figure out what's going on at the racetrack. He fidgets a lot, and I don't like that. <laughs> what about away from racing, though? Uh, away from racing? Um, probably biting his fingernails. It drives me crazy. What's he like around the house? Um, well, really, he just stays in the shop, and he has multiple things going on, but he's a neat freak. He likes to keep things organized, and he likes to have a planner. He likes to know what's going to be coming up. Can he cook? Oh, yeah. Um, whenever we have visitors from Australia or New Zealand, he likes to get on the grill. He likes to entertain. But if they're not in, his, no, he doesn't cook. <laughs> and who's got the biggest forehead, him or me? Uh, I'd just say probably you, because he's my boyfriend. I don't want him to get mad. <laughs> Gee, thanks a lot. I hope you're not coming back anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a nice, he's got less hair than you, so when the sun shines, you have to kind of have a little glare. Thank you for that, I think. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun catching up with uh, Keisha a little earlier in the day before we came on air. And uh, there were a few comments made about the similarities between Davey Ray's forehead and yours truly. Enough said, isn't there, Sammy? It's all right for you, you we're going, of beer. We're going any further. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow Check and Flag on Twitter, Facebook, and of course Instagram. Good to have you with us. Main event looming, and there's the social media contacts for the all new Speed Car Pro Series. Seven rounds. Tonight is the first of them, and you'll see them all right here on Check and Flag. What a stellar field. And the four wide traditional Knoxville salute, as we call it. There is no better sight in world auto racing. Adam Clark, who won the seven Super 7's pole shootout, starts on pole. Bright, we alluded to the fact that he stormed from 7th to 2nd in that pole shuffle. And will, as a result, start on the front row. It's a superb field. Andy Pierce has it all to do in the V5 car. Starting out of P20, the reigning Australian champion Neville Lance out of 16. He's had a wretched night, Neville, with mechanical gremlins in the car. And as a result, has not figured. Bennett, Mills, Talenta and Prowl are the last four on the green. So here we are, Clark and Alex Bright on the front row. Then Manders and Schumann. Schumann, of course, the American in the yellow car. He made a great start. He's up to third already. Bright on the outside of Adam Clark as they run down the back straight. A 34-lap journey. And the Polar Ice entry running upstairs takes the race lead. Clark second, Casey Schumann third. Bright had a barnstorming run around the top of one and two and just uh, caught Adam a bit by surprise, I guess. Adam running the bottom and elected to slide up and, and try and take that line away, but just wasn't quick enough. Great shot of the American in full flight. Clark, he knows he's in the race. He's got Casey Schumann nipping away on his inside and guess what another American coming strongly now in the shape of Davey Ray that's him in the black car up on the inside taking the challenge up to his compatriots he pulled that slide job on Casey Schumann there but uh, Davey the professional he is new end to back out great racing typical of speed cars side by side stuff it's been a spectacular and successful opening round of the speed car pro series there's heavy traffic as we look out the back of Mark Brown's car now Adam Clark, busy as ever. Alex Bright in the 29 Polar Ice Machine. 
He's jumped out and now leads by about eight car lengths. Clark is second. Schumann and Davy Ray having a terrific battle for third. Yeah, Clark was struggling there early. He was having a lot of trouble getting off turn two. And two Americans were all over him for a period. Carl Prowl is about to be lapped, but for Valvoline Sin Power, we look at the replay on the fence cam as these cars stream through. You can see Davy Ray and Schumann having a tremendous battle with Schumann down low on the circuit now. Ray with the big slide job originally to uh, to try and take the spot away, but yeah, that's the thing, I guess, with, with the track being so fast on the outside at the moment, if you do try and affect that slide job, it, it always creates the opportunity for the, the person being fast to jump back to the inside and get them get the uh, spot back. Yeah, bottom of the track's not offering a whole lot at the moment, is it? Not at this stage, I guess most, most guys hugging the top, but uh, you, you never know, that, tra that group may wear out and the bottom may come in later on. Rounds two and three of this series to be conducted at Colley and Bunbury. You'll see those in coming weeks on Checkered Flag. A problem for the man that I alluded to who was being lapped by our leading group of cars, Carl Prowl, has put on the amber lights. So the first stoppage in the first main event of the Speed Car Pro Series. This will show it. He was on his own on the bottom of the track and loops it midway between turns three and four. Yeah, you got to say, David, he found himself in absolutely the wrong place there. No man's land. So the Valvoline Sin Power race restart. If anything, it brings the tearaway American Alex Bright back to the field. Clark will want to stay right on his bumper as they stand hard on the gas. Davey Ray straight to the bottom. Can he do it? No, he can't. A better run on the outside enjoyed by Alex Bright. A little more traction upstairs. Now Clark forced to have a crack on the inside. It's too skatey there, and he washes off speed. Yeah, Davey did a good job of pinching Adam down there so he couldn't keep his momentum going. Here's Davey again, the slide job for the lead, but not quite. Davey's used this opportunity off the restart, bunching everybody up, and he's taking a full advantage of it, trying to attack to the front. The thing about Davey Ray is he's a bit like Donny Schotts in sprint cars. He can find speed in parts of the track or using lines on the track that few others can. Yeah, well, from this view, you know, where, where we commentate from, you can see there's certain parts of the racetrack that have moisture in them that aren't completely worn out yet. And you'll see Davey sort of drive through the middle here and he'll pick up a little bit of moisture right before the cushion there, not quite not quite enough to get in front of Alex then, but he's usual, utilising any bit of moisture on the racetrack he can, apart from the actual cushion that the race leader's on. Schumann is back in third. We saw Ray get perilously close to... Alex Bright there as he attempted the inside pass, the lap prior, this time he's not close enough. So it is America, one, two and three. 11 laps of the Magic Man 34 Speed Car Pro Series. Gone, there's Ray. Adam Clark is the only Aussie figuring in the race at the moment and he is fourth. We see Ray and Bright exchanging the lead there slide job after slide job great stuff from the two americans yeah bright's brave he keeps driving it back around the outside sometimes quite up close to the wall pretty tough to get by as, as i alluded to earlier every time you do slide through the inside there and, and take the line away you lose so much momentum when you do get back to the cushion you can see bright just turns the car down across the racetrack and and, and takes the spot back straight away it's been a good battle you'd expect nothing less from uh, these guys, well, they race to put food on the table about nine months of the year, and it doesn't get much closer than that, does it? As we now check out the flying Casey Schumann in car number 38. It is still bright, Davey Ray, then Schumann in third. Schumann, I've got to say, is starting to look the goods and moving a lot closer now to Davey Ray. They negotiate some slower traffic. Right now, though, Alex Bright is a clear-cut leader. Looking out the back of the reigning Australian champion, Neville Lance's car. Neville, a night tonight he would rather forget, has had major problems beneath the bonnet. And as a result, has not challenged at all. There's first and second. Lap traffic should, should uh, spice things up here, Dave. I mean, uh, with these two guys slide jobbing and then cars all across the track in front of them, we're in for a, we're in for a bit of a treat here. Always interesting times when they hit lap traffic, reflexes to the fore. You can see there's a wall of cars and Davey Ray has taken the lead from Alex Bright. The black 71 machine goes to the front. Bright gets caught upstairs and now he gets a better run off turn four than Davey Ray. 
So again, Bright is quite strong, but Ray in car 71 maintains a race lead of about one car left down the back straight. And now on the inside, it is Alex Bright again. They won't leave it alone, these two. And Ray comes back on the inside. Classic stuff of the Motorplex. Lap 19 of 34, and Bright goes back to the front. Now it's Davey Ray's turn to serve it up on the inside. Fantastic race, and it's always great to see cars, you know, in sprint speedway racing, we're always, you know, waiting for these races. These are kind of battles where guys are slide jobbing each other and utilising the track to the full advantage, and it's just awesome to see cars crisscrossing lines like this and, 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 and swapping up the lead. This is a sensational speedway. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff from the mighty speed cars. These guys are getting pretty aggressive now. There's not too much, uh, not too much space being given. I've said it numerous times, and I don't mind saying it again. They produce the best racing in car speedway. Look at this. Bright wasn't going to back out of that one. He nearly wore it, actually. Entertainment personified. Davy Ray, meanwhile, has stolen a lead of about 10 car lengths. There's 21 laps completed out of 34. Will it be slower cars that? Makes the difference in the end here. Will someone be balked? Have a look at the speed here of Bright again on the inside. Then he washes up track and almost glances the concrete wall. Baby Ray, he's got a buffer now for the first time in the race back on board with Neville Lance. Davey's done an excellent job using all his experience to uh, to get, get to the front. Uh, utilising the, the traffic and, and so on. But uh, Bright's done an excellent job of, of uh, trying to trying to run with him and, and pass him back when he gets the opportunity. It actually looks like he's running him back down a little bit now. Yeah, the Polar Ice car is not done with just yet. I was just starting to think at one stage that Ray's car may be set up better for the back end of the race. That applies to Alex Bright, who clearly was the fastest car in the race the first 20-odd laps, but I think I'm wrong because he's running strongly again. I think sometimes when you are the leader especially, you can be passed um, and, and it you sort of lose your rhythm, get a little bit flustered, and then sometimes you can just take a, a couple of laps to, to get back into that, that sort of uh, rhythm that you're in previously and find your bearings and, and get back to the... Neville Lance, the Australian champion. We ride on board as he pulls onto the centre green here at the Perth Motorplex. will take no further part in the event. So his mechanical gremlins have returned 26 laps into the main event. What about Alex Bryan? He will not give up on Davey Ray. They close the gap again as Ray negotiates slower traffic, heads down onto the inside. This race is not all over just yet. Across the start-finish line they run. Bright goes to the inside. He's pinching a page out of the book of Davey Ray. We've seen Davey Ray do that multiple times. Ray's got problems. Bright goes back to the front. Davey Ray has lost power. He heads on to the infield. A sensation of the Perth Motorplex, the leader, has fallen out of the race 28 laps in. Lost yeah. drive to some, for some reason, I'm not exactly sure why I pulled off there the early in turn two. That's a real shame there for Davey, he, he was certainly running away with this, this race. He gets out of the car quickly, Davey Ray, I'm wondering whether he's got a, a fire there. The crew on the scene with the extinguishers, of course these cars run methanol fuel and they do burn in a clear, in clear fashion, sometimes you can't see it. Possibly had a fuel leak, maybe. He's, he's, uh, not not on fire itself, but maybe it maybe a fuel leak issue or something. Looks looks quite wet even when he got out of the car. There he is in the 71 car. Looking at it as he exits turn two and basically shut the thing down and rolled onto the infield so Sammy Walsh of the opinion a possible fuel leak may have led to him extricating the car with a sense of urgency it is true what I said though about the methanol fires they can be lethal and almost invisible on occasions definitely it's uh, sometimes I guess when you do witness something like that it's, it's hard to understand what's going on because a lot of the time you can't see the, the, the clear burning flame and, and um, it can sort of catch you out a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure, Sammy. I think he might have had a power steering leak and I think the hot fluid might have dumped on his legs. I thought I saw a trail out the back of the car. True, yeah. But uh, last lap now, we've got uh, Alex Bright well and truly out in front of this race. Been some drive, hasn't it, by the pilot of the Polar Ice entry. 
this youngster. So much talent. The driver of car 29, Alex Bright. He wins the opening round of the Speed Car Pro Series. And the Magic Man 34, the richest speed car event in Australia. Casey Schumann, his compatriot, finishing in second. And Mark Brown, a stellar drive to jump onto the podium in the nine car in advance of Scott Glazebrook. Alex Bright, he would be delighted with that. And the traditional victory dance. Great stuff. Here's the race recap. And what a battle it proved to be throughout, featuring Davey Ray and Alex Bright. Bright was uh, going straight for the jugular. He wanted to get Clark real early. He didn't want to get Clark, let Clark get away with the lead. And, and uh, he withstood a lot of challenges from Davey. Eventually, Davey uh, got, to the, got to the front, though. And I don't think Bright was ever out of contention, though. Yeah, he was fantastic, Alex Bright. And the sort of action you're watching on screen, well, that was typical of what transpired in that race for the majority. And as we thought Davey Ray was going to sweep to victory, it all went wrong for him. And he pulled onto the infield, enabling Alex Bright to go back to the front. Davey Ray was looking for some assistance from the crash crew with the extinguishers, some hot fluid pouring onto his legs. We were speculating during the call exactly what would have gone wrong. Of course, we'll find out in more detail in the days ahead. But it was Alex Bright proving far too good for his rivals off turn number four. He took a comfortable win in the Speed Car Pro Series. Mark Brown, a sensational drive to finish in third. Well done. Yeah, no, the car came on right at the end there and um, a few more yellows would have been really good. But um, I'm very happy with the result. Considering, you know, it's in memory of Michael Figlamuni, it's um, and the family who just so lovely, you know, it's worth racing here every year. So I'm happy with third and um, you know, hopefully next year we come back and we can win it. Well, this young racer certainly showed why he's one of the most exciting guys to come out of America. A great second tonight, Casey. Well done. Yeah, it was good. Uh, it's It was a little better than what we've been here last time. And um, I got to thank Travis White and their whole family. They've, uh, you know, I mean, it's a family operation and Travis runs himself and, and they flew me out here to come run this race for them and, and kind of get things sorted out for them when they get going again. And, and uh, I mean, I, I wish there maybe would have been a yellow or two and that might have changed some things. But um, overall, pretty happy to, to come home second. And it's pretty cool to have a couple Americans up there and maybe, you know, maybe riling up the, the New Zealanders and Australians a little bit. Well, I tell you what, this is a very happy young man here. Alex, after such a great run in the Lucky 7, you've taken out the biggest event probably in your life. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's awesome to come down here and, and win. Uh, I, I just got to thank Jack Berry and uh, Graham Jones for letting me run this car uh, and the Figlaminis for putting on the show. It's an awesome event. Yeah, well said and well done, Alex Bright. Naturally, he leads the Speed Car Pro Series at the completion of round one in advance of Schumann, Brown, Glazebrook, and Redmond in advance of Matty Smith on 193 points. Thoroughly enjoyable night of speed car racing at the Perth Motorplex. And a reminder, you'll see the remaining six rounds of this championship on this program in coming weeks. Speedway Racing News Magazine, the November issue is now on sale featuring Christy Ellis on the front cover. It is essential reading for Speedway fans across Australia. $6.95 on sale at a newsagent right now. A reminder to join us next week on Checkered Flag. It's the second round of the Speed Car Pro Series, this time from the Quit Collie Speedway in Western Australia. You'll see that at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Sammy, good to work with you again. Thanks for your contribution. Thanks, David. It's been an outstanding evening and, uh, yeah, great way to celebrate the Magic Man 34 and the Pro, Pro Series inauguration. Well said, and $12,000 richer is our winner tonight, Alex Bright. Good to work with you too, Warren. See you next time. Thanks, David. That race reminded me of what Speed Car Racing is all about. Absolutely. Great night on behalf of the entire crew. Good night. You've been watching Checkered Flag on Speed, proudly presented by Valvoline Sinpower, delivering the ultimate motor oil protection and performance.